receive an envelope, just raise your hand, and, and we will come by. Bless the name of the Lord. If you uh, need to make out a check today, the name of the church is on the outside of your envelope. Greater Jesus Tabernacle. Bless God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to take a minute, amen, to acknowledge some of our visitors. Praise God. Brother, you want to stand and, and, and tell us your name and the name of your lovely wife and the church you attend. Hi. My name's Henry. This is my wife, too. We've been here before, so yes. we're visitors. Yes. Thank you for making us feel welcome. God bless you. 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 Amen. Why need the word? God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Amen. 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 Share your, share your name with everyone. Uh -huh. Amen. God bless you. You look like someone else I know. Bless God. Hallelujah. Amen. You got a sister next to you? Hallelujah. You want to stand and, and introduce yourself? God bless you. Sister Linda Barnett. Praise God. All the way from, praise God. All the way from Kansas City. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God. Amen. For my older brother, Pastor Evangelist Theodore Hughes from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Could not leave his church on Sunday morning until after he retired. He is retired now. And he ran to Austin. Stand up and say a little something. Hallelujah. 
God bless you, brother. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, sister, he may be trying to get your attention all the way in the balcony. Amen. Amen. We'll see how it works out. Glory to God. All right. He's going to drop that from 20 feet. Okay. Uh, we thank God for all of you who had something to give this morning. Amen. All of you that it was in your heart to give. Amen. So if it's in your heart, God's going to bless you. Amen. Next time you'll be able to give something. Amen. We thank you, brother, for being here this morning. God bless you. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Lord Jesus, Father in heaven, we give thanks for the tithes and for the offering we received today. And Lord God, we thank you for the faith of the people of God and the love of the people of God to bring their gifts unto the Lord. Bless this amount, Lord God, and multiply it like only you can, that the work might be completed here at Greater Jesus Tabernacle. In Jesus' name we pray that every heart say amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Here's our pastor. Amen. Good God, I had clap this morning. Somebody say hallelujah. Give God some glory. Come on now. Come on now. We've been giving glory to the government when you get your checks. Amen. Been giving glory to Toyota and Mercedes when you buy your new car. And the Pepsi and the Altec when you go to your jobs. But I wonder if there be anybody in here that love my Jesus this morning. Is there anybody here?
of the Lord. They all come together. Amen. So if you hear, and you know you hear on a testimony, you know you hear on a miracle, look back over your life and think, what has he turned around in my life? Now this week, tomorrow's Memorial Day, and you're still here, but somebody has planted the seed for you. But this week, I'm asking him in memorial of your prayers, in memorial of your thanksgiving, to turn something around in your situation.
And so you know how the devil is. He said, oh, you got cancer. Oh, you get ready to die. You might as well go and make your will out of everything. You know, you know how the devil will fool you in your mind sometimes, you know. And when I went home and I prayed about it and prayed it, and I prayed and prayed and prayed. And what happened is I had two biopsies, okay, the, uh, the uh, first one, I mean, was negative. And what happened is she had, you know, told me, uh, I mean, they didn't get enough of a tissue sample. And then I had to have another biopsy. I said, no, I'm not going, you know, through all this hell with y'all. And so two months later, I had, went back and I had the other biopsy. And then, and then four days later, I was negative of cancer. I am cancer free. Of this phone. Hallelujah. And I thank my God. I thank him. I thank you, Jesus. My, my, my. 
And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was no noise was abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. They were marveled. And they all they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians, Medes, and Edomites, and dwellers of Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews, proselytes, Cretes, and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. This is uh, the birth of the first church outside of the Old Testament. This is the birth, birth of the first church. Look at somebody like you're ministering to them and like they're ministering back to you and say, you are the first church. Amen. You're birthed from the first church. Amen. You're from the first fruits. Hallelujah. You're from the first fruits. Now let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We come to you humbly. Humbly and boldly, Lord Jesus. You have the throne of grace. You are the throne of grace. Lord, give us mercies. We need it in our time of need. My time of suffering and my time of passions, we need to obtain your mercies. You, they endure forever. They endure forever. Lord, and it's our time of need right now. Lord, in our time of need, the church, some church, many of us have forgot that we are birthed out of your spirit. We forgot, Lord Jesus, that we have victory over sin. We forgot that we have victory because you had victory over death, Lord. We forgot, Lord Jesus, that you are priority. Hallelujah. You're our first priority, our first love, Lord. But we come to you because we have to be reminded that we forgot, but Lord, forgive us. We repent, Lord Jesus. Repent the kingdom of heaven is at hand, Lord. But Lord, you birthed out your spirit. In the name of Jesus, work out your spirit this morning. Expound your word to us, Lord. Give us understanding. Heal somebody. Deliver somebody. But save somebody, Lord. You said if we don't have love, if we don't have charity, we're nothing. Lord, give us your love that we might minister. Let your spirit deliver this word this morning. Let your spirit prevail. Let God arise and let your enemies be scattered. In the name of Jesus, we have victory. The devil is under our feet. In the name of Jesus, we speak life. We speak authority. We call on the name of the Lord, Lord Jesus, right now. And stop demons in their track. We stop the enemy in their track. We stop the adversary because of the name and the blood of Jesus. You sent us a comforter, and it came with power after the Holy Ghost come upon us. In the name of Jesus, we speak, we go, we think. We, we breathe in power in the name of Jesus. And somebody said, I got power. I got power after the Holy Ghost came up on me. Hey, man, I got power. Hallelujah. And just excuse me if I get excited. I'm going to do that because I love the Lord. You may be seated. God is good. Pentecost Sunday. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It's my strength. I'm looking at strength out there. I'm looking at God's deliverance, God's healing, God's testimonies. I'm looking at his strength. I've got joy because of the strength and the testimonies. Amen. That I see out there. It's good to see you, Elder Hall. It's good to see you, Sister Mary. 
and family and everyone this morning. Amen. My brother up there, we're gonna we still we still getting together. I want you to know that he's gonna be a blessing to the church. Amen. He's ready to work right now. God, God bless you. You are the first fruits. Amen. Amen. You're the first church. Amen. Because you come from the first church. Now you're not the very first one. We wasn't there. Amen. I understand how time works in a couple thousand years. Amen. But you come from the creator of heaven and earth. Literally, spiritually. And when we say literally, I have to say spiritually is literal too. Amen. Spiritual is a real thing. In fact, it's more real than your tangible self, than your flesh, than your perceptions, your five senses. Your spiritual sense is much more clear and real. But we have to walk in his spirit. Though we war after the flesh, we do not walk in the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are... Oh, when we say mighty, you have to say it like you mean it. But they are mighty, mighty through God. Through the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. It's, it's hard for me to talk about God without really uh, feeling like expressing that authority. Hallelujah. You know, the devil's not playing with you. He ain't been playing with you in your life. You, <laughs> you know you've been through some things and you found out it's not a game. In the world of lust, the world of drugs, some of us still have that urge right now, but if it wasn't for the power of his Holy Ghost, we'd be trying to grab at it and open up the bottle and get the pill right now. And the yearning and those proclivities, those fleshly lusts and, and things that we want to fix because we got a void in our life and, and we got a need that was created from expressing or living in this world, not being of this world. Some of us had done a great job of becoming of the world when we was in sin, born in sin, shaping in iniquity. And some of us, Brother Henry, uh, did a, a better job than partying than others, didn't we? When we was out there, we tried our best to have a good time and let the good time roll. We tried our best to do it, but Paul said, Jesus said, uh, the apostle said that it's death. Amen. It's death. The flesh is enmity toward God. You know, if, if you're going to war and you're warring at, after the flesh, death is fighting death. <laughs> Thank God. Thank you, God, for that. Death is fighting death. You, you can't fight uh, I guess you fight fire with fire, but not the Holy Ghost fire. But we war not after the flesh, but uh, hallelujah, we pull down strongholds, spiritual strongholds. And you know, even uh, this uh, fear is a spiritual thing. The devil wants to connect to our mind and change us. And he wants to connect to how we think so he can get us to uh, perform and act in a different way. Amen. And you know, works and formalities won't get many things done in our life. However, when you connect it with the foundation of belief, the foundation of truth, amen, your actions don't speak louder than words. Your actions speak from the Holy Spirit that is within you. Amen. The Spirit of God calls us to action. Jesus said you're going to be witnesses. And I got some examples of some cities and, 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 and uh, uh, countries that you're going to be witnesses in, like Samaria and Judea. And the uttermost parts of the earth. Lord, why do you want me to witness over there? I want to witness over here. Amen. But he called us to be witnesses. Hallelujah. You are from the first Fruits. Acts, the book of Acts, I'll talk about it a little bit. It portrays Jesus as Henrietta Mears, one of my favorite authors, said it portrays Jesus Christ, the living Lord. 
the living Lord. Acts portrays Jesus Christ, the living Lord. Hallelujah. Luke, a lot of scholars call Acts Luke part two. Luke part two, Luke wrote Acts. And it shows what Luke shows in his gospel, what Christ began to do on earth. And Acts shows what Christ continued to do by the Holy Spirit. Luke shows what he began to do on earth, and Acts shows the continuation of it through his Holy Spirit. God's blessings, God's work doesn't stop, does it? That it doesn't stop. That's why I, I decided to put you in the first church this morning, because his uh, mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I decided to put you in the first church this morning because we, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And we don't have to, we don't serve a God that is emotionally unstable. We don't know what he's going to do today. You know, your friends and you sometimes are emotionally unstable. And I baked some breakfast for you today, but tomorrow I might just give you some orange juice and send you on your way because sometimes we're, we're emotionally connected to how we was treated. Amen. But I thank God that he is the same for me. And we change. We decide to do things that we shouldn't do. Amen. But if you confess your faults, amen. Hallelujah. He's faithful and just. He'll forgive you. The same God will have mercy on me. And he said, I'm going to show you supreme mercy. I'm going to give you this comforter. Say, oh, comfort me, Lord. Comfort me, Lord, with your Holy Ghost power. Comfort me, Jesus. So Pentecost is Pentecost Day in Greek. It means 50th. It's the second of three great feasts. And uh, it's the feast that, uh, you know, the Jews, they celebrated Pentecost. If it was a real Jew and they didn't accept Jesus, it meant something different. And we'll go over that. But the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost. I told you before, holy means sacred. Hagios, sagios, sacred, sacred, set apart. Holy sacred. Dad, uh, Bishop, what is the Holy Ghost? I don't get it. it. Well, it's just God's spirit. God's spirit is holy. Amen. And that's how we interpret it in the apostolic church. He said one time, I'll send you the comforter. Another time he said, the comforter, I will come and comfort you. Amen. I, a hallelujah. I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Is another form and another way that he connects to me without blowing me into oblivion and without putting all his weight and power on me. He could come in like a gentleman, like Elder Hughes said, and, and, and come out of my bellies and, and flow from me and help me to walk right. Help me feel better. Amen. When I, when I was about to throw in the towel, when I was about to take my own life, I, the Holy Spirit reminded me, you're made in my image. You're made better than that. You're better than depression. You're better, hallelujah, hell than fault. You're better. But because I'm holy without holiness, the Bible said that no man and no woman, I say, shall see the Lord. Be ye holy, for I am holy. I thank God for 50 cost. Pentecost, hallelujah. I thank God, hallelujah. Hagios set apart. Numa. I'm having a little tough time. Breathing this morning, but thank God for the treadmill and the elliptical, the basketball court, and the, the lawn cutting. And, and I thank God for that because I'm breathing better now. But I have a, under my shoulder blade right about right here, not my kidney, there's a muscle or something that I re-agitated. And when I move a certain way, ooh, I don't want to breathe. My body doesn't want to function the way it's supposed to. Hey, but Numa is the wind, it's the breath. It's the spirit. Don't you know God is breathing on us? He breathed on the disciples after he uh, came out of the grave. He breathed on them. He breathed on uh, someone and healed their body. He breathed on the, the, the face of the deep. His spirit breathed in man's nostrils. When 
the devil told me I can't breathe, he's alive, Brother Theodore, Minister Theodore. He's alive because I can breathe in spite of how I feel. And that God can breathe in me. In him we move and we breathe and we have our being. I'm breathing because of God. We are only one breath away from death. Now death doesn't happen immediately. It can be 10, 15, 20 minutes once your brain loses oxygen for at least 20 minutes. And there's hardly anything they can do with you except if you die going to see, uh, going to see the man's, uh, uh, the aristocrat's daughter. Or unless you're Jesus, unless you got the power of the Holy Ghost, God can breathe life into dry bones. Amen. He can breathe life. And, and last week, Hallelujah, we was talking about how Jesus healed the woman that was bent, bowed together, and she had a spirit, an infirmity, of, of ailment, a spirit on her bow together, bent. But God came to straighten her up. Every time God comes and you got faith in him, there's a possibility of a miracle in his will. Every time you believe on the I am that I am, God is here to help us. Numa means to breathe. Breathe life into your people, Lord Jesus. I just stop and, and request from the Lord when I pray, when I preach sometimes. Breathe life into all of these faces. Breathe life into me, Lord. Breathe abundant life. You come that we might have an overwhelming amount of glorious, abundant, exuberant life. Hallelujah. He didn't come that you might die and then come see, go see him immediately. Most of us, there's a work to be done and he's going to have and give you abundance while you do it. But it ain't to be like the rich man and sit up and say, oh, I'm blessed and uh, I'm going to keep my riches and get through this uh, needle's eye here, Lord Jesus. Amen. But he went away sad. The rich man went away sad. The nobleman, he went away sad because he could not see how he could take him and his love uh, into the kingdom. And him and his love for money into the the kingdom, amen. But God, thank you, Lord Jesus, is requiring that while he's blessing us and while he's giving us life, I'm looking at miracles and blessings on the way. I thank God for what you told Sister Roberta. Amen. I'm looking at what God, but it's because you're believing. While he's doing that, it's for you to be a blessing to the kingdom of the Lord. You got to be a blessing. He wouldn't have spent time, Jesus that is, when Nicodemus telling him that you must be born of water and of spirit and you can't see and you can't get into the kingdom of heaven. He wouldn't have spent time doing that, amen, if, if he wasn't supposed to believe. He wouldn't spend time doing that if we got to just sit up on a hill with our light and look down on everybody else and get to go vacation and do nothing with it. But your blessing is for a purpose. He told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And it doesn't stop there. The wind blow where it listed. It's Pentecost Sunday. He said, the wind blow where it listed, Nicodemus, and thou hear the sound thereof. You can't tell where it's coming and where it's going. So is everyone who was born of the Spirit. We must pray that God's will be done in our life, that God's will helps us. We must pray in God's will because His will blows and we don't know where it's coming, where it's going. Amen. But this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. We must pray that, Lord, whatever and how and my little old gifts and my little old talents be glorified in my life, Lord. I lift you up so you can draw all men to me. If I be lifted up, hallelujah, you're going to draw. And you're the first one that he draws. Just take time and have the audacity to speak life to yourself first. If you don't help yourself with the spirit of God, you can't bless anybody. 
anybody else, but lift up Jesus. Say, Lord, empower me. Endow me with your Holy Ghost power. Bless me, Lord, abundantly that somebody might see who you really are. That you are really the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the bright and morning star, the lily of the valley, the man that, in the Bible, the man from the Bible that said that we are servants like him, but you're, we're his friend. Lift him up because he's closer than any brother can be. Lift him up, you'll feel better. Lift him up, you'll do better. Lift, lift him up, you'll look better. And you don't have to put on as much makeup. You don't have to put as many gauges in your ear. Amen. But lift him up. Hallelujah. Lift him up. If I be lifted up, I'll draw. Lift him up. So you can look to the hills. You lift him up. Then everybody can look up and look to the hills. Because I help coming from the Lord. The devil is who we look down on. He's under our feet. The devil is who we stop on. He is not on our level. He's there. But lift him up. We don't look down on Jesus. But if you want to look everywhere in all of your valleys, he's there with you too. Lift him up if I be lifted up. Don't you want to draw all men instead of complain to all men? Isn't it better to draw than complain? I got a lot of to complain about. So you sit down and listen to me for one hour and then one year then two years and I'm just getting started amen you and then it's your turn and, and then when you're done I'm going to complain for the rest of my life but we got enough to complain about complaint doesn't give us strength complaint doesn't give us power list your problems and put them on the altar and then leave them there cast your cares on him we got enough to complain about but we even got more to worship him on. We even got more to bless his name on. Hallelujah. I got enough complainers in America. I need some worshipers to worship with me. The Bible magnify the Lord with me. With me. With me. Let us exalt his name on one accord. With one accord. Together. Magnify him. My wife said years ago, oh yes, yo. At least she said it. When you magnify something and you put a magnifying glass on it, it looks bigger. And if you got the right microscope or telescope or magnifying glass or zoom on your tablet or phone, things start to look much bigger than what they really are. Amen. When you magnify your problem, it, it, it just brings you down. Your weight weighs you down. Amen. But when you magnify Jesus, amen, you know you can't magnify him as big as he is. Hallelujah. You can magnify your obstacle bigger than what it is. You can make a mountain out of a molehill. We don't use those cliches no more because we, nobody wants to read and nobody, everybody wants to use cuss words. But you can make a mountain out of a molehill. But when you magnify the Lord, he is a God that can move your mountain. So he's bigger than the mountain. I don't know anybody that can make God as big as he is. But all you have to do is lift him up. And he's as big as he needs to be to your circumstance. Hallelujah. Put the magnifying glass on him. And, and you'll find out that you got to go back and get a telescope. you got to go back and get the Hubble telescope. He's bigger than what you thought he was. Lift him up that Matter of fact, right now, here's an intermission. Let's just lift up the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Lift him up. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Pentecost, 50, 50, 50. 50 days, I dare go into a text after I'm excited. But let's settle down just a little bit. Breathe, Numa, Asia, Numa, Asia. Breathe, Holy Spirit. Let's look at Leviticus 23. How does that take us to Leviticus? Let's find out. And ye shall, 2315, ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, start at the Sabbath, and then count. 
Start at the Passover. Then count from the day that we brought you the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Even unto the morrow, after the seventh Sabbath, shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. So the word is Shavuot. Shavuot. It's called the Feast of Weeks. And it coincides pretty closely to Pentecost, to Easter, and the resurrection. The Easter is similar to the Passover. It's not the same thing, but there's a reason why Jesus is having a meal with his disciples. There, there's a reason why uh, he, he uh, said uh, he walked the earth 40 days and then 10 days. He said, wait in the upper room, and that means 50. Shabbat dealt with that 50 feast of weeks. What's seven times seven? What's seven times seven? Hey, Amen. You know that's God's favorite number. I looked at that not too long ago, and I said six times eight is 48. Six times eight is 48. Seven times seven is 49. One more than six times eight. And to be truthful with you, I know it's 49, but I a little bit forgot. <laughs> Amen. God's favorite number 49. And you start from the Sabbath. You start from the Passover and you get 50. How does that have anything to do with the Passover? You're looking at almost exact, the exact same time. Feast of weeks. Seven weeks. Somebody said fed seven weeks. Seven weeks from the beginning of the second Passover and then pressing, present offerings to new grain. And, uh, what they were celebrating in Shavuot was the Ten Commandments revealed from God to Moses. They were celebrating uh, from the Passover the 50, the weeks. And, and it, the Passover meant a great thing. Even I see the blood, I'll pass over you. They put the blood up there and then they they feast of unleavened bread. Uh, they they had uh, a little time to do some baking, so they used unleavened bread, so it didn't have to re rise up. Hallelujah! The Passover deals with those revealing of the Ten Commandments. Amen. You know the Holy Ghost was working back there too, wasn't it? It was where it had to be. It had to be. It, it, it brought them out of Egypt. Amen. It worked with them when they put the sprinkled the blood once a year for atonement. It worked with them when they had the, they let the escape, the scapegoat go. We use that cliche too, the, the scapegoat. You're using me as a scapegoat. Well, they, they had atonement and they let one go go once a year, but the priest only could deal in the Holy of Holies because we did not all have the uh, we didn't have the clearance and the children of Israel didn't have the clearance to deal directly with the Holy Spirit. Amen. They, they couldn't do it. So Shabbat, it had to do with the harvest time too. When God blesses you, he gives you a harvest. Amen. It's abundance, isn't it? But it's for you as a testimony. It's for your life to be uh, looked at as uh, a testimony or an example of how God is more than the world with us. Shabbat, hallelujah, it marks the conclusion of the harvest. Now, in 1 Corinthians, keep that Leviticus in your mind, and I'll try to wind this up if the Lord let me. And 1 Corinthians 15, 19 through 28 puts it like this. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Only, well, man, we got we got a resurrected Christ with power. We don't just believe in a president, a billionaire, a mother, a father with just power from the Lord. We got hope in a God with power. And it said, if you only have hope in Christ, your man most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as 
in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Somebody say, alive. alive. But every man in his own order, Christ, the first fruit, afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to heaven, even his father, when he shall have put down all ruin, all authority, and power. For he must reign, oh my goodness, till he hath put all enemies under his feet. We had a man come here last week, and he used to come often, and he made his way back, and he said, he said, oh man, you done, uh, well, I'm not going to say all that, but he said, basically, I'm doing a good job in, in a most prolific way. Amen. And he said, one thing you got to do, though, and I dare not do it right now. But see, he said, you got to lift that foot up like your father, and you got to put it way up here. And, you know, I told you I got breathing problems and everything. I guess that's what the preachers used to do when the power of God hit them. And the wind got everything just, just flew up. Amen. <laughs> But my bishop, my dad used to be preaching, and the Spirit of God hit him, and would I rip my pants if I go? Amen. <laughs> if I stick it up like that, amen. He said, my wife said, that's all right. I can put it up higher. I can. Hey, maybe not like him, but <laughs> amen. But God, I, I did that just to show you, mm, destroy his death under his feet. Under now, if you ever remember, you remember now because of my silly analogy. Under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death, for he hath put all things under his feet. Somebody said all things. All things under his feet. But when he said all things are under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him and keep Samer in that home and when all things shall be subdued under him then shall the son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that God may be all in all oh, thank you Jesus amen you know my father-in-law Bishop Rick says you can live down a lie because it's a lie it's under your feet amen and, and you know the devil can't hurt you as long and he can't hurt you with lies because God will protect you amen if you believe in God hallelujah unbelief is under your feet I, I can't I, hey Lord help me help my people help our people in these last days understand that belief puts unbelief under subjection belief Faith, hallelujah. Faith, hallelujah. Faith unseen. Believing in something that you, you can't make sense of. Believing in something, hallelujah. You're trying to get across to somebody else. Hallelujah. Suppresses unbelief. Suppresses disappointment. And suppresses things, hallelujah, that choose not to worship the almighty God. Shabbat with Shabbat. Moses was revealed, but I thank God, uh, hallelujah, with Pentecost, Jesus was revealed. Amen. You know, the oblations and the sacrifices had to be corrected once and for all when he was the last lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He's even correcting their feast like Shabbat. Amen. Moses, hallelujah. Let me keep these old glasses on. Reveal the law and the commandments. But in Pentecost with the Holy Ghost, Jesus revealed his spirit. Hallelujah. This is the birth of you and I. The birth of the first church. Amen. Amen. The law. Thank you, Jesus. From Shabbat to, to grace from Jesus. Grace. Hallelujah. Grace, Romans 7 says, what then shall we say that the law is sin but no means, yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin, for I would not have known what is to covet if the law had not said, 
you shall not covet. Ephesians 8, for by grace we are saved through faith. Oh, not of yourself. It is a gift of God. The gift is his spirit and his grace. Hallelujah. I thank God for the gift of the Holy Ghost. When he gives you his Holy Ghost, he's given you his grace. Hallelujah. He's given you his power. I'll quote the good bishop one more time. Grace does not come without power. Grace does not come without passion. And passion brings suffering of Jesus. And if you suffer with him, you obtain grace. You obtain his everlasting mercies. Hallelujah. Grace, we're saved through faith. How are you saved? How do you know Jesus? Tell, just tell your neighbor or tell somebody in the streets this week, I'm saved by grace. It's not from my own self, and it's not from man. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved from his grace. Hallelujah. Shabbat showed some bondage. There was some bondage showed in Shabbat. Amen. But freedom is revealed. Hallelujah. Not just on the day of his resurrection, but on the day of Pentecost. He freed us from sin. He freed us from the bondage that we put upon ourselves. 2 Corinthians 3, 15 through 17 says, But even unto this day, unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when I shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord, somebody said, Now the Lord. Somebody said, Right now the Lord mm, is that spirit. The Lord is that spirit. And when the spirit We had a little, we had some commandments and you couldn't keep those commandments. And there was bondage because some of those commandments might get you killed if you break the commandment. But where the spirit of the Lord is, when Shabbat turns to Pentecost, there is freedom. When Shabbat turns to Pentecost, there is liberty. When Shabbat turns to Pentecost, I get joy when I think about what is done for me. When Shabbat turns to Pentecost, I get joy when I think about the healing he's put in my hands, the faith he's put in my soul. I get joy when I think about the testimonies that were saved by and the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Shabbat turns into strength. Death turns into life. Oh, hallelujah. I serve a Pentecost God. I'm about to be 50 myself. He brought me a mighty long way. Oh, 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 oh. He brought me from a mighty long way. I've been lied on, cheated on, talked about, mistreated. But I own the day of Pentecost. That's Pentecost happened in your life. We tarry at 6 o'clock on Sunday night. We tarry at the altar until the Pentecost Holy Ghost comes raining down. I tarry at the altar till the Holy Ghost came. I'm so glad that wonderful day my soul's been satisfied. When you understand who he is, you understand. Mountain don't look right. 
Lord, yes, just talk to Moses. Just talk to Moses. We kind of look fearful. But Shabbat is from weakness because you was weak. So you needed the, the billy goat. You needed the ram. You needed how a turtle dove to atone for your wicked ways. But from weakness to the power of God. And Jesus said you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. I'm not leaving you yet. I got to leave you some words. You're going to be my witness. You're going to have some power. You came from Shabbat. That was good enough to get you there. You came from weakness and slipping and sliding in the church and, and sleeping around and doing drugs and not believing. Let's just talk about that because you'll say I came too far down your road. Just not trusting in the Lord always is what we came from. But somebody said now we here. Somebody said now I'm here. I'm here by the grace of God. Now I'm here in power because I got his spirit. God does not know how to move in weakness. Mike Tyson in his heyday, he didn't know how to be feeble. He didn't know how to believe. He not believe he wasn't going to win the fight. Michael Jordan didn't know how to not believe he wasn't the best. Well, how much more does God love you? He's even greater than that. He said, if there be no God before us inside me, I haven't met him, so he must not have no power. What he's saying is another God doesn't exist. I speak to the witches, your God is no good. I speak to male worshipers, your God is not existent. I speak to the horoscope readers and the palm readers. Throw your sage out the window. There's no God in it. Hallelujah. There's no God in it. He goes from weakness to power. Genesis 1 and 2 said the earth was formless and void. Darkness was on the face, the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord moved over the surface of the waters. I'm about to take a vacation and get my wife home to North Carolina where there's a whole lot of Atlantic water. I can't imagine a man. I can't even fathom a God if I didn't believe that that was able to move that great ocean. And if you go down to the Bahamas, us from Florida, you see seven miles deep and we can't even get there but once every now and then. But the Spirit of the Lord has so much power. He moved the face of the deep with his little finger. Matter of fact, he moved it with his thought and it happened. He goes from weakness and, and we start not to believe in God because uh, oh, I don't know if I'm Jewish. And I don't know if I'm Greek. And I don't know if I'm Gentile. I don't know my background, but they serve God and maybe he did it and maybe he did and, and, and he helped the children of Israel. But can you imagine a God, hallelujah, that created what you're sitting on. He created what you believe in. That's why the Bible says don't believe in what you see. We got to walk by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah. We got to walk by power and not by weakness. We got to walk by authority in Jesus and not feebleness. Somebody just get up and walk right now and say, I can't see it. I can't see it. But I got faith that I can feel. Faith that I can believe. Faith that I can achieve. You can receive God's authority through his faith. Shabbat took me to Pentecost. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad about it. Hallelujah. We go from childhood to adult. I got a few more. I got that all right. And just got to stop and give them some praise right now. Somebody said hallelujah. We go from childhood to adulthood. From Shabbat to complete cost. From Shabbat to Pentecost. From Shabbat to 50 cost. Amen. First Corinthians 12 says charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Look like weakness to me. Whether there be 
in tongues, they shall cease. Whether there shall be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which in part shall be done away. Don't you know at one time he's going to come back for a church without a spot of wrinkle. And then Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child and thought as a child. But when I become a man, I put away childish thing. I got Pentecost right now. Hey, this is that which is spoken of the prophet Joel. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three, but the greatest of these things is charity. We go from adolescence to maturity. First Peter 2, 1 and 3 says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice. Somebody say all malice. All doubt and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. Say all evil speakings. Anything not done in faith is evil. It's sin. Somebody said all evil speaking. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. We go from carnality to spirituality. That's what we're talking about here. Amen. God is a spirit. And we got to worship him in spirit and in truth. And Romans 12, 1 and 10 says, I beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. This is your reasonable service. And then it says, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind comes from your spirit, your heart, if God is connected to it. Hallelujah. So in Acts 2 and 38, let's go ahead and come on home and see what the end is going to be. The, the old folks used to say, I believe I'll run on and see what the end is going to be. You heard this about every other Sunday in this church. It said, then Peter in Acts 2 and 38 said unto them, repent. Somebody said repent and be baptized. Every one of you. It, no, yeah, yeah, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody said, you've got to go down in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. And then there's remission of sins. There's a removal that happens in this Pentecost, Pentecostal stage. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and your children and to all that are far off, even as to many as the Lord your God shall call. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted, saying, save yourself from this untoward generation. Untoward meaning scolia. Scolia meaning scoliosis, an example. Crooked generation. Bent generation. The woman was bent over. And she was folded over. And Jesus saved her. And, and he lifted that spirit off of her. Well, save yourself from this crooked, crooked, disgusting, nasty, faithless generation. Hallelujah. Save yourself. Repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. The Bible says they continue steadfastly. Somebody say steadfastly. Steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. I'm sorry, you're on 49. I, maybe I should have a younger message, but I got a bit of an old school message. Hallelujah. Be baptized and continue and steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking and bread and in prayers. You are from the first fruits. You are from the first church. You might as well worship the Lord like it. You are from, hallelujah, the fruit of his womb, you're from his Holy Ghost. If you had the time to allow him to come in and speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance, his Spirit is omnipresent. Hallelujah. It's time you say, Be present on the inside of me all the time, Lord. His Spirit is everywhere, but we've got to be baptized with his Holy Ghost even on Pentecost. Sunday, there was so much power on the day of Pentecost. It was strong enough to save 3,000. Hallelujah. Add it to the church. Add it to the church. Nowadays, we can barely keep ourselves saved 
the devil is a lie. I believe in you as the scripture says. I trust in you, Lord. Lead not to my understanding, but I lead to your understanding. Yes, I acknowledge you in all my ways. Direct my path, Lord. Direct my path, Lord. Direct my path, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah, Sister Cynthia. Do you feel like working? Why, I pray for somebody. Come in your own way of ministry. Hallelujah. Lord, the Lord is moving at the altar this morning. Move at the altar, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and praise Him.
God. I said I'm going to start calling y'all women, men of God. Thank God for this woman of God. This is your last week, isn't it? Coming up on your last week. And God has given her promotion and graduation. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. I pray that everyone has a safe Memorial Day. As you remember your loved ones, remember your friends and family. Remember those that continued in the faith, steadfastly in the faith. Amen. Amen. But who was it? Cornelius or Apollos? One of them, their prayers went up as a memorial. Amen. To God. So keep God in your memory. Thought, think about where he came, where he brought you from. Amen. Amen. Worship God tomorrow more than anything. Hallelujah. Thank you. Stand to your feet. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Grab somebody's hand. Grab somebody's hand. Remember from today, Pentecost is about you every day. Amen. Amen. It's 50. It's 50 because every day you're 50. Every day you Penta. Every day you're the Holy Ghost working in you. If you haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost, we need to tarry with you. We baptized three souls not long ago, a couple weeks ago, and we need to tarry with you. Amen. Uh, fun books to Worthy books, to, chapters to read, Acts 2, Acts 10, read Acts 18, 19, and it talks about how the Holy Ghost filled the whole house, filled those who was looking, filled Gentiles, amen, ethnos, filled, amen, everyone needs to be born of the Spirit, and baptized in that name, somebody said that name? Amen. Amen. 66 books in the Bible. Elder Hughes said Wednesday, we need to read all of them. And Acts is a major, major, major part of our Christian walk. Amen. Major part. Mm. We're to be baptized in his name. We're to pray in his name. We're to believe in his name. We're to be baptized with his spirit in his name. His name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that he's God, Father, Holy Spirit, Son, Comforter, Love, Grace, Mercy, Jaira. Amen. I'm so glad. Shalom, sick canoe. But he's Jesus. Gee, somebody say Jesus is his name. Lord, we call on him. You said in Acts 2, whosoever call on your name shall be saved. Call on his name. Save us, Lord. Save us, Lord. Hallelujah. We ask for saving and protection over our physical bodies and our minds. But you came to save our soul. Hallelujah. Change our mind. Lord, give us wisdom. You said that we have to ask for it and we can get it wisdom, what to say, what to do, how to love each other. It's very important. We treat each other. Out of the six commandments, six of the ten, said we have to treat each other right. Lord, I treat my brother right. I love my brother. Forgive us the love that we have for each other even covers the multitude of sins. Lord, and your love covers all. Hallelujah. This weekend, Lord, I pray positivity, optimism on some of us as we think and as some of us hallelujah cry, laugh experience some bad feelings that we used to have Lord I pray that you give us joy joy in thinking about you Lord and let us see you in every situation how you brought us out Lord you protected us you kept us we didn't have to be here, Lord, but you, you make all things new. Hallelujah. 
We walk in newness of life. We love our brother and sister. At Greater Jesus Tabernacle, hug somebody. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Greater Jesus Tabernacle, love on somebody this morning.